Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Your boy due diligence is back. And for those of you who are saying I'm not confident anymore, that is totally not true. Try to go to the airport with only three hours of sleep, post a video, get on the plane, get out, try to call an Uber, and it turned out that nobody in LA actually is willing to take you to the place you want because it's apparently your godmother live on a bloody hill. Right, and then you have to take one and a half hours of public transport to the place that you want to go. Okay, but anyways, this is not about me. This video is dedicated to all of you that have been following us from the beginning. And thank you, thank you so much, you guys. We reached a thousand subs in less than three weeks. If you check the data on YouTube, it's not only monumental but it's also historical. And you know, we're gathering a bunch of haters already. Not like we care anyways. Our DD is solid to an point that sometimes it just feels like like what's the whole well, what's the whole point of of hating us, you know? Sometimes patience is the key. If you have enough patience to wait out certain things and using the proper price point and proper allocation of your fund to average down your position, literally there's only three situations that might you, you might run into that will make you permanently lose a lot of money. But for the most part, stock investing, no, actually not investing, because there's a difference, there's a distinct difference between investing and trading. Let's just talk stock trading. Stock trading is more about money allocation, fund allocation, and spotting the timing rather than price point, okay? But for investing, it's a total different story. That's why I posted the previous video uh, for you guys who are like, you're in the airport, you're still not confident in everything. I was just tired, okay? There's a huge difference between investing and, and trading, and the timeline is very different. However, without further ado, let's get into this video. And I highly recommend you guys to listen to the end or watch the end to the video. Uh, a part of it is me being a little bit emotional and the other part of it is just or the rest of it are just heart to heart very it's like pure honesty that shows you guys that a lot of times you cannot be emotional and you have to understand your own limit. May the power of the beaver corn grant you intelligence, the perfect timing, the power, the strength, and the, the hard and rock solid morning wood to, to screw over all these shorts once and for all. Hey guys, this is Due Diligence here, and uh, I know it looks pretty bad. Uh, it went down by 20%, and uh, you know, a lot of you are asking how much money am I losing? Um, but first, uh, we are not financial advisors, we do not give financial advice, right? And everything we say on this channel is for shits and giggles only, right? So, um, as far as how my portfolio goes, I mean, it's tanking, right? As you can see, it's, it's red. It's like the most red I've ever seen literally in my life. So, right now, plus all the previous profit I had in this, and uh, with like how much I'm losing, I'm about around, I think, plus all profit, lost about 8K right now. Okay, so I'm down 8K. Um, I don't know if, if I'm delusional or it's just because on uh, all the ego building up or just because, you know, I did so much throughout DD, which I actually started to believe in meta materials. Not like actually started to, I always believed in this, this company because um, technically speaking, meta materials are not like not meta materials, the company, but meta materials, the component, the nano component, um, is literally in like a very early stage of de development in terms of um, the process of commercialization. And if you listen to on um, George's press conference, you will pick up some hints about like how these components are manufactured. Um, right now, there's not really a huge profitable way of manufacturing it um, because they're still using mostly uh, semiconductor components right uh, and that's why in my other video i was talking about why the 10-year lease of a bigger place uh, really matters that means they're actually trying to um, figure out a way to lower their costs and use their own uh, sort of a machine or hardware or like a not using the, the old semiconductor equipment to make everything uh, more viable for commercialization, right? 
And as I speak, a bunch of people just selling it and selling it. And at this point, like, like I'm not Trey, right? I am not Matt. I don't have the ability to uh, sort of sway the masses and tell you guys, like, like I'm not selling. I'm holding and I hype you, hype you guys up. And all of my videos already have all have like very special data to back them up really and especially like the double squeeze it's more about timing than anything um because i've already done like very detailed math and everything but as far as this thing goes i mean it's 20 percent, but the next option exploration day is still like a week away like I, I don't know what to tell you guys okay i'm just trying to be honest here and at the same time it's like you know we're all in the red and if this is your maximum perceivable or acceptable risk like it really depending on your risk profile right like as far as this goes like if you still have liquidity a lot of times when you're just like when the stock is really low you buy in and you sort of sell off at a a little bit higher price and you can make a profit anyways but at this point if you look at previous data for this stock um, from the past week already 66 percent of the stock holders changed hand for mmat and then for the past two days, you add up all the change hand, including today's change hand, they're literally over 96% of the entire stockholder of this company changed hand. Um, I don't know if there are institutional money coming in when retails are dumping. Uh, my hypothesis is this is actually what's going to happen because they're just reaping the price at the literally the lowest point. Because if you look at the daily chart, like as I said, right? Uh, where it should be trading at is about $7.1, right? And then our price floor for this company in terms of all the fundamental analysis, in terms of like all the financial analysis, it's at 6.62. And now it's trading lower than that. It's trading at the 60-day moving average, which means... I don't know what to tell you guys. It's literally like undervalued at this point, okay? Because we're already like at a sort of like a panic sell situation in the market. Uh, with the NASDAQ like rebounding. In my, in my other video, I've already talked about NASDAQ's and rebound. It's going to take a dive rebound. I, I even think the oil price, it's it's like the, the shorts are overhyped. The oil price is still going to go up to $80 because I, I thoroughly believe in the OPEC standoff. I mean, you can call me delusional, right? But these are all just my, my personal opinions or our personal opinions here, okay? You guys should, no matter how thorough our DD is, you guys should always do your own DD like on the side and then figure out like what's your maximum loss what's your stop loss and at what price point you guys are gonna cut your losses right because you don't want to be those retail players who like invest in one of those like little small uh cap stocks or some or some little penny stock where like in a year it, it, it decreased by 50 percent you should always have a price point in your you know mind you know mind you're like okay i gotta stop here like i'm playing with my retirement money i'm playing with my kids college fund I'm playing with, you know, future money. Maybe I could use this money to buy a house. Maybe I could use this money to do something else. Maybe I can invest this money in real estate or something like that, right? You should always have your form your own financial opinion on whether, you know, it's it's, it's a sort of a acceptable trade or it's a it's a bad trade off right now. Like you could even like take the money out and wait it out, right? Maybe wait for a year. Like you think the market is crap, wait a year and then invest in the same company. The company is still here, okay? The tech tick, the ticker is still here. Like you should form your own opinion on what price point you're willing to cut off all your losses and just leave. A lot of times, you just have to let go, right? Like I think I think at this point, if if we form a very objective uh, sort of understanding of the stock, all right. Lost days, lost days, lost days. For those of you who are literally buying at 20, this shit is like, we were literally, it was like one fourth of the, the entire portfolio, right? If this is your only, your only portfolio. And, 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 and you just need to understand that sometimes um, you gotta, gotta talk to yourself a little bit, like talk to whoever staked you, right? Talk to your family, like telling them that, you know, it, everything is, is down. Cause, um, one of the reasons I don't really want to talk a lot about myself because my father actually lost a lot of money during the market crisis in 08 and during the Asian market crisis in, 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 in 2015. And he literally lost so much money that it sort of breaks the entire family that dynamic. And, and you know, it, it's, a, it's a huge mental toll on himself. And I think one of the reasons why he lost so much money is, is we just get stuck in the vortex of, okay, we're losing money, we're losing money. We either have to buy in and we have to sort of earn this money back. 
But a lot of times when you have a family, especially a lot of my viewers are from 35 to 60 years old, right? A lot of you probably already have like a spouse or, you know, a spouse maybe doesn't really care about money or they're just like your trophy wife who swipe your credit card, right? But at this point, like you got to like take another approach. And I think communication is the key. You should talk to your stakers, talk to your family and talk about, okay, now we're done 20%, we're done 50%, we're done 70%, we're done 10% whatever we're up 50 percent we're up 20 percent we're up 30 percent and tell them like how much money you're playing with here right don't like don't like just sneak around like under their back and start investing or like stop investing tell them like your situation here and you guys should have an informed consent decision on whether you guys should leave the market or stay in right because if you stay in you're literally like fighting off of of these mental tools you're gonna have on your screen Self. psychologically speaking if you're playing with like your last bit of retire money literally like all of the years you've been working for like this is your hard-earned money right if you just lost like say five percent or ten percent like if you cannot take on a mental toll don't 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 play with the market because for us we're still young like we can and and you guys always say i'm a smart guy i can i can always make the money back and 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 at this point like I'm just I'm just gonna shut up and stop talking, right? I'm just gonna take my own advice and wait for the 11th through 19 day cycle, and then I have data to support my hypothesis. And this seems just to be a outlier. I don't know what is going on with this thing anymore, but in reality, I do, right? Because a lot of times, you know, when the shorts is, like scare you off, a lot of people panic sell. Like all of these are panic selling, and as I told you before. At least 92%, I think I said 96, 96% 96 of, of the stock's owner like changed hand. And we don't know, like as far as right now, we don't know like who's buying those stocks, like who are selling them, who are, who are buying them. By my hypothesis is the institutional, the big people are, are trying to sort of reap the, the, the very cheap chip from the retail players. Because I really think due to our due diligence, and also, after our Dear George video is going to drop probably in, in a couple of days, I think we can see an upside. I mean, I, I can't really because because right now it's, it's like you guys are like, oh, my God, like you said this and you said that. Most of them are correct. It's just like today. I, I barely anticipated that um, this fat minute sell off is going to be this bad. But hey, guys. Um, Again, we're not financial advisors. Um, we're, we don't give financial advices. Um, and everything we say on the channel is for shits and giggles. And we're merely human. Okay, I'm, I'm merely human. I lose money. I win money. Right? That's just a part of life. So um, hopefully see you guys on the upside. And, you know, keep keep tuned. But, um, yeah, smash the like button if you like those kind of content. And uh, if you like those heart-to-heart -heart moment. I'm, I'm just speaking the truth here, okay? And uh, if you haven't sub, sub, because I think we're in this for the long run, and I think our YouTube channel is not going anywhere. Um, you know, we love doing DD. We love uh, interact with the community, and hopefully, dear after dear George video, um, you know, we spotted a lot of interesting stuff that is going on with the press conference, and hopefully, George understands us, and we actually can see a pretty bright future here. All right, see you guys on the upside.